Listening Library presents What is Rock and Roll by Jim O'Connor Illustrated by Gregory Copeland What is Rock and Roll? In August of 1953, an 18-year-old truck driver walked into a small building in Memphis, Tennessee. The neon signs in the windows read, Memphis Recording Service. The young man was named Elvis Presley. He wanted to record two songs, My Happiness and That's When Your Heartaches Begin, as a birthday present for his mother. The receptionist, Marion Keisker, was also the sound engineer that day. So she led Elvis into the studio and put him in front of the microphone. Then she went into the tiny control room and recorded what he sang. There was something about the yearning quality in Elvis Presley's voice that intrigued her. So she decided to make a copy for her boss, Sam Phillips, to hear. That was the beginning of Elvis Presley's career. It was also a breakthrough for rock and roll. Chapter 1 The Roots of Rock Rock and roll is true made in the USA music. But in the early 1950s, if you ask kids what rock music was, Most of them wouldn't have a, had a clue what you were talking about. Rock music didn't just spring up one day out of nowhere. Its sound, its sound owes a lot to the rhythm and blues, the R&B music of the 1940s and 50s. Rhythm and blues was a popular music of black musicians. The songs were exciting with a strong, insistent beat. R&B music was completely different from what was played on radio stations for white audiences. Those stations played a mix of big band, jazz, and silly pop hits like Doggy in the Window. The music was safe and parent-friendly. Then white performers began covering popular black songs. Covering means doing the new version of an older song. Elvis Presley had a huge hit with Hound Dog. It had first been recorded by a black singer named Big Mama Thornton in 1952. Elvis rocketed to stardom in the mid-1950s. In large part, he owed his success to a man named Sam Phillips. Sam grew up in poor... Uh, uh, Sam grew up very poor in Florence, uh, Alabama. He was white. But as a young boy, he picked cotton in the fields alongside black laborers who sang while they worked. Sam loved their music. Sam later moved to Memphis, Tennessee. There he opened a recording studio and started his own record company, Sun Records. He signed up many African-American performers. Sam wanted to bring their music to white audiences. Sam also let amateurs, black and white, record in his tiny studio. That's how Elvis Presley's got started. Sam believed Elvis had a special talent. So Sam got two musicians he knew, guitar player Scotty Moore and bassist Bill Black, to back up the young singer. Often producers recorded a song in one or two takes. A take is a simple is a single, complete recording of a song. This kept costs low. But Sam believed that singers, most of all, new singers, needed time to get it right. He would record the same song, or parts of a song, over and over. Sam did the same thing with Elvis. In 1954, Sam Phillips recorded Elvis Scotty and Bill playing the old blues song, That's Alright, in a speeded up cover of a country music classic, Blue Moon of Kentucky. Country music. 
Rock music was also influenced by country music. Country music began as far back in the, as the late 1700s, when colonists came to America from England and Scotland. Their music took root in the South in poor white communities. Some country songs are slow, sad ballads about lost love and hard times, but others are light-hearted, fast-paced, and great to dance to. Dolly Parton is the most famous country music singer of modern times. On August 5th, 1954, Elvis performed the songs at an outdoor concert in Memphis. The show sold out. Neither Elvis nor his bandmates had ever been in front of such a huge crowd. They were very nervous. In fact, Elvis was so nervous, his legs kept shaking and twitching while he sang. The crowd thought it was part of the act. Girls started screaming with excitement. After that, Elvis kept on shaking and swinging his hips at every performance. Teenagers loved it, but their parents hated it. Elvis went on to become the biggest rock star in the world. He had 28 number one singles and 10 number one albums. John Lennon of the Beatles once said, before Elvis, there was nothing. After Elvis, rock and roll was here to stay. Guitars The sound of electric guitar is at the heart of rock and roll. The two most iconic electric guitars are the Fender Stratocaster and the Gibson Les Paul. Rock guitarists love them because they are loud, versatile, and cool looking. In 1954, Leo Fender introduced the Stratocaster. He had three pickup pickups devices that converted the vibrations of the strings into an electrical signal. Les Paul designed his so solid body electric at the same time. He was already a famous guitar player, so Gibson, the manufacturer, named the guitar after him. Today, many, many musicians own and play both Fenders and Les Pauls in concert. Chapter 2 The Motown Sound In the early 60s, R&B became known as soul music. By this time, all kids black and white listened to it, and danced to it. Soul music was hugely popular. Sometimes soul music was light and fun, as when the Supremes, the, a girl group trio, sang Baby Love. Sometimes soul music had a strong gospel flavor. Gospel songs came from African American churches. They were known for having a call and response pattern, where the lead singer presented a question and other singers gave a reply. Aretha Franklin became known as the Queen of Soul. She started singing in church when she was a little girl growing up in Detroit, Michigan. Her soul hit Think is a great example of a call and response song. In it, Aretha is warning her boyfriend that he better think before he goes out with, him, with another girl. The backup group keeps repeating and keeps repeating "think," which reinforces Aretha's warning and also pro propels the song along. Three record companies ruled soul music: Motown, Atlantic, and Stax. Motown was founded in 1959 by Barry Gordy in his hometown of Detroit. Because Detroit was the center of the U.S. car industry, many people called it the Motor City. Barry shortened the name to Motown. Motown songs often had a fast pop feel. The Motown sound went beyond the simple guitars and drums of R&B and early rock hits. It used tambourines to accent the backbeat strings like violins and cellos and horns, saxophones and trumpets. Barry Gordy said 
The key to hits was the K-I-S-S -S principle, which meant, keep it simple, stupid. Barry's formula worked. Motown had many of the biggest groups of the Soul era. Three of them, the Supremes, the Temptations, and Smokey Robinson, and the Miracles, were hometown success stories. They had all grown up in Detroit. Other superstars of Motown included Stevie Wonder and the Jackson 5, the group where Michael Jackson started out as a six-year-old lead singer. Records In the 1960s, LP, long playing, records usually had 12 songs or cuts, six on one side and six on the other. Often a song on an LP album would, would, would also be released as a 45, a much smaller record with a big hole in the center. The 45s were the most popular records for teenagers in the 1950s and 1960s. Why? There was only one song per side, so they were very cheap. Side A had the song that the record company thought would be more popular than the Side B song. DJs at radio stations were told to play Side A songs. Radios in those early days of rock, the only way to hear music if you were outdoors was to listen to a car radio. That changed when transitor radios were developed. They were small enough to fit in a the pocket. They were powered by a small 9-volt battery and weighed less than a pound. Although the radio's small speaker produced a tinny sound, the popularity of rock and roll helped sell billions of transistor radios during the, during the 60s and 70s. Today, original transistor radios are valuable collector albums, uh, collector items. Motown groups always had great singers, great arrangements, and great outfits. The girl groups like the Supremes all wore the same glamorous dresses. The guy groups were just as sharp with matching suits and sh shoes. And while they sang, the groups would move their feet and hands in unison. It was thrilling to watch. Stax Records, located in Memphis, competed with Motown. It called itself Soulsville, USA. Many Stax groups had a sound that was very close to gospel music. The recording studio was an old movie theater. The space gave the music recorded there a deep church-like sound. Stax's biggest star was Otis Redding. Redding had a powerful, haunting voice that could express joy or despair. His last recording, sitting on the dock of the bay, was his finest. It's about a lonely man who has moved far away from home. Sadly, not long after recording what became his biggest hit, Otis Redding died in a plane crash. He was only 26 years old. Sam and Dave were a powerful stack soul duo known for their high energy shows. They were nicknamed the Sultans of Sweat because they would soak through their fancy red, white, or green suits at every show. Sam and Dave had 10 hits, one right after, an after another. They included Hold On, I'm Coming, Soul Man, and When Something Is Wrong With My Baby. Unfortunately, these incredible performers never got along. They broke up several times and finally called it quits for good in 1981. Uh, Atlantic Records was started in New York and grew into a powerhouse company. One of its founders was Amit Ertegen, a, a man with an incredible gift for spotting great new talent. 
Atlantic's music sounded better because of the way it was recorded. Stereo sound. For many years, all music was recorded in mono. This meant that all the instruments and voices were heard as one channel of sound. Back then, a record player usually only had one speaker. Atlantic was the first record company to record in stereophonic stereo sound. This divided the music onto two channels. Part of the band might be on the right channel and the rest on the left one. The sound from the two speakers mixed together resulted in a much bigger, fuller sound. Atlantic had great success with soul groups such as the Drifters, the Coasters, and the singer Ben E. King. Aretha Franklin was the label's biggest star, but by the mid-1960s, soul was becoming a smaller part of Atlantic's business. Atlantic had signed on hard rock groups like the Rolling Stones. Motown moved to Los Angeles. Its greatest days were over, and Stax was no longer the hit factory it had once been. Why did Soul lose popularity? It was because of four young men from England with floppy hair. Their rock songs made their way across the Atlantic Ocean and became instant hits in the USA. It was it was it was a start of the British invasion of rock and roll. Nineteen sixties dance crazes. Half the half the fun of early rock and roll music was dancing to it. Soon songs started coming out that started brand new dances. Probably the most famous and also the first was the twist by Chubby Checker. Everybody was doing the twist, even grown-ups. Soon, other dance crazes followed, each one based a song. There was the mashed potato from a song called Mashed Potato Time, as well as the Watusi, the Pony, and the Locomotion. Every weekday afternoon, Kids could watch teenagers doing these dances on a TV show, American Bandstand. Chapter 3 The Beatles A Revolution in A revolution in rock music started in Liverpool, England, when teenagers John Lennon, Paul McCartney, and George Harrison formed the band. They called themselves the Silver Beatles. All three played guitar. They added a close friend, Stu Sutcliffe, on bass guitar and drummer Pete Best to the band. The group couldn't find club jobs in England, so in 1960, they went to Hamburg, Germany where they were hired as the house band in the bar. They played nearly every night, which turned them into a very tight band. They soon shortened their name to the Beatles. In April 1962, Stu Sutcliffe died suddenly, and Paul replaced him on bass. At that point, the group had a smart manager named Brian Epstein. John, Paul, and George knew by then that Pete Best was not a strong enough drummer. So that August, Brian Epstein fired Pete. The group got another guy from Liverpool, Ringo Starr, to take his place. Brian told the Beatles to dress alike in suits that often had no collars. They had new haircuts, too. Hair When the Beatles first got to Hamburg, they dressed in black leather jackets and wore their hair with a big wave in, in front. The sides were combed back and formed a ducktail 
Lots of pop musicians, including Elvis Presley, had similar haircuts. Then Stu's girlfriend asked him to change his hairstyle. He grew his hair long enough to cover the tops of his ears. And he combed his hair down over his forehead. The rest of the band laughed at Stu's new look. But eventually, George, Paul, and John got similar haircuts. What became known as the Beatle Cut. Beatlemania struck England on January 11, 1963, when Please Please Me was released as a single and became an instant hit. Early Beatles songs had a strong beat and simple lyric about teen love with catchy choruses and great harmonies. Beatles concerts got crazy. Girls screamed. Some fainted from excitement. There hadn't been anything like it since Elvis. In February of 1964, the Beatles had their first U.S. tour. As soon as they got off the airplane in New York City, a horde of screaming fans greeted them. They also appeared on a popular Sunday night TV show called The Ed Sullivan Show. It was the first time many American teenagers saw the group perform. The Beatles were in their late teens and early 20s when they wrote their first songs like She Loves You. With its simple, repeated choruses of Yeah, 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 it sounds like it was written and sung by teenagers. It's peppy, fun, simple, and great to dance to. Then in December 1965, the Beatles released Rubber Soul. This was a completely different kind of Beatles album. The music was far more complex. If you play She Loves You and then play In My Life from Rubber Soul, you will hear the difference. In My Life is a great song full of feeling. In it, someone is remembering all the people and places he, he's, he's loved in the past. The sound of the music in Rubber Soul was different too. Songs featured unusual instruments. An Indian string instrument called a sitar, a piano altered to sound like a harp, harpsichord, and a distorted fuzz bass guitar. In June of 1967, the Beatles' most famous album was released, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. It had 13 songs on it, including When I'm 64, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, and the title song. No two songs sounded alike.